Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Suzerain, a new political choose-your-own-adventure text-based type game uh, that puts you in charge of a uh, deeply problematic country uh, that's sort of a borderline dictatorship, but also trying to come out of dictatorship. Uh, that is also stuck between the great powers in a, a Cold War type scenario. Now, the countries are all fictional, uh, including the East and the West, but uh, it very clearly draws on many of the issues uh, that a lot of uh, sort of similar developing type countries uh, would have faced uh, in the 1950s, 1960s, sort of that era of the Cold War. It's a very interesting game. Uh, I'm enjoying myself quite a lot playing it. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel uh, from just a couple of days ago. Um, so let me know, you know, I'm not sure whether this is the best type of content or not for the channel, so I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Leave your thoughts down below. Uh, this is the end of the live stream that I did the other day. We're just coming off of concluding some infrastructure projects to try and revitalize our roads in the northern portion of our country. We had to make a decision between that or railways. We went with roads. I know railways are probably a more immediate return, but I had some concerns because the railways are, uh, I guess, the, the, the high-speed technology we were trying to use is was reported anyway as being developed in one of the communist countries and we've decided to align ourselves with the west so in that case it seemed to me like it's a bad idea to build a massive infrastructure project that would make us beholden potentially for the technology to the east when we're trying to align with the west um, that could have undermined the infrastructure deal also the north is much more underdeveloped the area where the railway would have been is already pretty well developed so i was trying to focus on you know, areas where there's more upside, although it is a longer term project, according to the game. That's the decision we just made. We're about to jump into the first inaugural ball because we just won the presidency, uh, as well as some investment decisions for ourselves. But that's all I'll say. Let's jump back into the live stream and I hope you guys enjoy. Back to the capital. Invest in Arkansian company stocks, an opportunity to buy stocks from an Arkansian company. A personal investment opportunity has been relayed by Mr. by Mr. Manager, an experienced stockbroker. What a name. In Ventura City. Arkansia is selling valuable shares of Armand Industries, an up-and-coming electronics manufacturing company. We could invest or let the opportunity pass. Um I'm the president. Should I be investing in other companies? I guess we'll go with invest a thousand shares. I'm not going to invest all my personal wealth. That seems like a bad idea. But I'll invest a thousand of my personal wealth. Reception at the inaugural ball. I just finished buttoning up my suit jacket when the doorbell rang. The presidential guard had arrived to pick us up for the inaugural ball. The ball was a three-decade-old tradition, breathlessly anticipated by politicians, bureaucrats, and the press. All eyes were about to be on me. As a proper politician, you need to enrich yourself, you know? I like the way you think, Sev. I called on Monica to get the children ready. Looking in the mirror, I straightened my tie and took a deep breath. After tonight, there would be no turning back. Suddenly... Diana hugged me from behind, startling me a little. Monica had fixed her hair into an elaborate braid woven through with ribbons. Papa, Mama told me it's time to go. <laughs> okay. Tell your mother I'll be ready very soon. Hello, darling. I'm ready. Where is your brother? Stroke her hair. Hello, darling. I'm ready. Where is your brother? I think Frank is still upstairs. It was almost time to leave. The big ball was starting in less than an hour. Now, where is my first lady? Darling Frank, it's time. Monica, Frank, enough fussing. Where's my darling first lady? She was wearing a simple yet elegant beige sheath dress and short heels. Her hair had been neatly pinned in a chignon, showing off the pearl earrings I had given her for our 15th anniversary. All those years, she had stayed by my side. Now we were about to begin the most challenging chapter in our lives. Wolfpack, thank you very much for the sub. Good to see you here, dude. Okay, how do you do, Mr. President? 
kiss her hand, embrace her, just stand there and look at her. Um, I guess I will embrace her. Now, where the hell is Frank? <laughs> Monica, my love, you look gorgeous as the day we married. Now there's that charm that got you elected. Frank trudged down the stairs. This thing itches. Are you, go are you good to go, Frank? I'm glad to have you with us for this big night. I'm just dying to go. Are these people going to be around us from now on? <laughs> yes. They're, I don't know if they're our friends. Are they our friends? Are these people our friends? Bear Poo, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, I guess they're our friends, Deanna. You should trust them, right? It's all right, baby. They're here to make sure nothing bad happens to your papa or his family. Dad, do I really have to go? Couldn't I stay home instead? I'm nervous myself, Frank, but I'd feel a lot more confident with my son by my side. It's a party thrown for me. Don't you want to support your father? You'll love it, son. I'm sure there'll be plenty of pretty girls to dance with. Don't make me angry, Frank. <laughs> um, I'll be a lot more confident with you by my side. I'm such a charmer of my children, right? Girls. Sorry, Sev. All right. Anton, what are you thinking about? Nothing. Nice car, isn't it? With all that's been happening, I'm wondering if I made the right choice. I was thinking we've come a long way together, haven't we? Just remember, no matter what happens, the children and I will always be here for you. <laughs> I'm going to help Papa fix everything. Let's just enjoy the night. Um, well, it's too late for that, Sev. We already... That, that ship has sailed. We're here, sir. Hope you enjoyed the drive. I did, Serge. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. How are you today? I'm just as good as I can be, but today is your day, sir. I'm glad you're in charge now. You know my entire family voted for you. Thank your family. I'm here with all of your support. I won't let your family down, Serge. Um, I don't want to promise that. Serge is going to stab me. Super Chacho, you think everybody's going to kill me. Why can't we have anything positive in this chat? Everybody thinks I'm about to get killed. Politicians, bureaucrats, and celebrities, the cream de la cream of the Swordland elite stream inside the building. More soap opera than Political Simulator? I think it's a little bit of both, uh, Llewellyn. I stepped out and immediately found myself surrounded by loud voices and camera flashes. Hordes of eager journalists thrust their portable microphones my way. My guard fend off, fended most of them off. But one woman managed to dodge them and corner me. I recognized the sword, swordish broadcasting company logo on her press lanyard. Mr. President! Do you plan on working together with the opposition parties on the expected constitutional reforms? This night is for celebration. I'm not going to talk about my policies now. Uh, I mean, we've already agreed to start working with the opposition in some of our initial stuff.
Heck no, Wolfpack. We've already agreed. We're already working with the with the opposition party. So um, this night is for celebration. I'm not going to talk about my policies now. That might be a little bit out of touch. Um, if the opposition is willing to support us, we're going to work with everybody. My administration will bring real change. I mean, I guess I could say we're going to work with everybody. That's just platitudes, right? I don't want to work with everybody, though. I don't want to work with the crazies, right? Anybody else have any other opinions other than Wolfpack? Come on. One or three. Murder the opposition? <laughs> Whoa! I don't see that as an option. Is that like a secret option I can choose here? Stab the stab the reporter with a dagger. Said every administration ever. <laughs> Get the vote thing? Alright, alright, we'll do this. Let's let's take uh one second, guys. Let's open up a poll. Why do I not have a... Oh, manage poll. New poll. Oh, if you guys give me bits, I can let you vote multiple times. I'm not going to do that. All right, so there should be a poll. All right, so I'm getting I'm getting the responses here. It's a two minute long poll. I don't know that we're gonna wait two minutes, but let's see here. We are. Things are looking interesting here. Looks like number two is winning most of the options, most of the votes. Oh no, three is coming back. It's eight eight. What do we do for a tiebreaker? I guess I haven't voted. So we're at 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh, nope. Jesus, you guys. It just seems like you're just trying to vote to, like, even this thing up. 3-10-10-3. We're at 26 votes so far. We need, a, we need, a, we need to split this, guys. Who's going to be our tiebreaker? You're going to have to buy this game, you think? It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a lot of reading. I'm sure there's a lot more I could like dive into the backstory, read about all the different political characters and whatnot, and I think really get a little bit more out of it. But You voted for five. Stop playing and fly IL-2 instead. I don't know if there's a war, uh, Kara. Um, I think so. I, well, I'm a, there's there's definitely military stuff you have to do. I don't know if there's an actual war or not. All right, so it looks like number two won. So I'm going to end the poll in five seconds. You've got to get your votes in uh, now if you if you want me to uh, to to count them. So we'll go in five, four, three, two, one. All right, option number two won with a grand total of 14 votes. Option number three came in at second with 12. And options one and four came in with three apiece. So basically, we're going to tell this reporter tonight is a night about celebration. That'll probably get us some bad press, but that's what we'll say. Does, th does that mean you don't plan on working together? Do you think you share no common ground with the other parties? Wow. Do I need to do another poll now? God damn it. <laughs> um, so I did not say that. One more question. Could one of your first acts of presence be to be... I've had it with your questions. My motivations are not for you to know. Well, that doesn't seem very presidential. Perhaps it was. If Perhaps it was. If left unchecked, those two parties will only make more trouble for me. It is to ensure that the USB has the funds we need to stay in power long. Whoa, okay. Let's, let's, uh, I've had it with your questions, guards. Ah! It's to ensure that the USB has funds we need to stay in power long enough to truly bring democracy to this country. I'm sorry, 
but I said no more questions. The the write up here was much more polite than uh, than than my answer. I've had it with your questions, guards. That's enough, ma'am. <laughs> the entrance was decorated with beautiful ribbons in Sorlin's colors of white, yellow, and maroon. A lush maroon carpet had been rolled up down the stairs. I feel like I should be drinking scotch right now while I'm playing this. We entered the lobby and joined the throngs of people making their way toward the ballroom. Behind me, I heard a familiar voice. Peter, there they are, the most beautiful family in Swordland. Uncle Peter. Hi, Uncle Peter. It's great to see you. You two are growing faster than I than I am getting wiser. Are you sure you've gotten any wiser, Peter? You're a sight for sore eyes, Peter. Likewise. Happy to see a familiar face, Peter. Evelyn. Peter's wife approached us and shook our hands with a firmness that belied her delicate features. Congratulations, Anton. I have to say the results were clear to me from the beginning. Appreciate it, Evelyn. It means a lot. Thank you. We both worked as hard to make that happen. I wish I were as sure as you. There's a woman behind every successful man. Uh, that seems like a very cliche thing to say. To say. I don't know that... I don't know. I'm worried that, like... They made it sound like we haven't seen Evelyn in a long time, so I wonder if there's like some affair backstory that could be triggered back there. <laughs> Not the dialogue you expected to hear and see clicking your stream thumbnails? Hey, you know. I guess we'll go with four. It's very cliche. What a gentleman. You've barely said a word. I'm more uh, I'm more than relieved to have this roller coaster ride over with, but of course now the real work begins. Ah yes, managing the help, planning parties, daily trips to the salon to look your best for foreign dignitaries. Wow. That was that was kind of snotty. Don't be some old fashioned. I plan to use my power as first lady to advance the position of women throughout Swordland. Equal rights for our sex are long overdue, wouldn't you say, Anton? As long as you don't burn the roast, am I right, Peter? Wow, jeez. Up to a point, yes, they must neglect the... Oh, God. Absolutely, we'll work together to achieve that. That's my wife, never content to just be a pretty face. Uh, I'm going to agree with her. That feels like the best thing to say. Can we go? I want to see the ballroom. We're having a conversation here, Dina. Yes, it's time. Let's go. Of course, darling. Um, be a sexist asshole, Super Chacho? Come on. I can't open my presidency th that way. Um, I mean, I want to be like a family man, but like part of me is also like, does this conversation continue if I... I'm curious to see like what the dynamic here is, but I guess we'll just let's go. We left the lobby and made our way toward the ballroom. Inside, we were yet again surrounded by a noisy crowd, but this time it was the politicians who sought to applaud, appease their new authority in Sorland. I spent the next few hours shaking hands, joining various conversations, some serious, some superficial, and making speeches. We finally settled down at our ta dinner table with the Vecterns as the band started playing some slow jazz tunes. Oof, that was tiring. What, are you already tired? Another drink? If we have to shake another hand, never trust them. Your family will betray you. Everybody is all about the betrayal. The betrayal, the betrayal, the betrayal. Gosh. A uh, family man, as in groom son to be the ruler after us, get rid of untrustworthy brother and his wife, make political alliances by marrying our daughter. Whoa. Oh, we are going back to CK, huh? Um. Well, we're going to have to get used to it. Or another drink. I'd say another drink. Let's let's get sloshed. Well, suddenly a loud banging noise echoed from the outside the ballroom. Then another one and another. The musicians stopped playing. Everyone in the room was looking around in confusion. Peter and I turned toward each other, realizing the dawning on realization dawning on both of our faces. Fireworks? 
No, gunshots. As Monica heard the word, she lunged from her seat. Shield Monica and kids. What's happening? I knew it! We never should have gone. Chaos broke out as some of the guests flung themselves under their tables and others ran toward the doors screaming. Deanna burst into tears while Frank tried to comfort her, hiding the fear in his own eyes. What a good older brother, huh? Three more gunshots rang out loudly. Mr. President, are you all right? Carl Geyser, the head of the Sordis Police Force, was running towards us with three more police officers in decorated uniforms. They all had their guns drawn. As soon as he made it to us and saw that we were unharmed, he let out a big sigh of relief. Thank God. What the hell is going on? Status report. Check the perimeter! <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Um, Carl, give me a status report. One second, Mr. President. Check the perimeter now. Paul, Jansen, follow my lead. We'll bring them to the safe room. Don't worry, the situation's now under control. Please follow me. What a fucking night. <laughs> it's not over yet. Shh, not now, Peter. Can't you shut your mouth for a bit? You could say that again. Huh. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, it didn't... I inserted the fucking, apparently. <laughs> uh... It's not over yet. Quiet, please. I talk when I get nervous. Peter, shut up! <laughs> you tell him, Evelyn. Carl flipped a switch on the wall and the panel opened, revealing a hidden staircase leading to a large reinforced door. Inside, a set of emergency lights flickered on. The safe room was comfortable and spacious, with expensive-looking leather sofas. The small security monitors on the wall displayed grainy footage of each room in the palace. There was a boardroom and a pantry containing enough provisions to last us months. Monica and Evelyn set the children down and started wiping their tears. Carl stepped away from us and made a few radio calls. When he was done, he returned to me and Peter. So what's the status? Not the best inauguration ball I've been to. Are we under attack? Who's attacking us? What is going on? So tell me, Carl, do we have clowns for a security force? So what is the status? Carl's radio suddenly crackled to life. Every second felt like an eternity as he pressed his ear to the receiver. When it fell silent, he turned to us. Good news, we're not in any danger at the moment. The situation has been dealt with and the perimeter has been secured by the guards and the police. If I may say, sir, this is what we know so far. We have confirmed that two people were gunned down in front of the palace. The gunman is one of them, and we are sure that he was working alone. Sure he was. I'm sure he was working alone. The attacker fired three shots at an MP. One of them, one to the head, two to the body, killing, instantly killing him. The presidential guards at the palace immediately shot and killed the attacker. The gunman has not been identified yet and will require an investigation. The MP that was killed was identified as Bernard Sur Circus. This is huge, Anton. This will cause a lot of problems. A lot of problems. Who's Bernard Circus? Swordish poet, novelist, and short story writer and politician. He's acclaimed for his lyrical flow and was regarded to be the leader of the Swordish avant-garde. His early writings were heavily influential by the social, cultural, and economic problems of his home city of Dyer. His works earned him the description of a romantic communist. He joined the Red Youth during a great... So, apparently, the person who was killed was a communist. Just what we need in an already fractious political situation. Peter pulled out two cigarettes and handed me one. He then turned to Evelyn. I could hear him trying to reassure her that everything was going to be all right. Monica was still trying to tend to Deanna and Frank, paced the room, mumbling that he should have stayed home. Comfort Monica and the friend, the kids... 
Peter, old friend, what the hell have we gotten ourselves into? Smoke alone. You feel bad for the gunman? Ouch, pirate. Come on, he just murdered people. Or a person. Um, I mean, I've already been real pro-Monica. Peter is my friend. We could go with Peter, or I could smoke alone as the president. Just Monica? One? I'm not going to do another poll, but we'll we'll give you guys a couple seconds to weigh in. The assassin never killed a person. He only ever... Okay. Come on, Super Chacho. That's not... That's not cool. Everybody or every person is a person, regardless of their political opinions. All right. Um. <laughs> Four. Have THD do a Kermit the Frog impression. <laughs> Become an emo. Do three. Um. Nothing you and I can't handle. We're gonna see this through at all costs. I crushed the cigarette in the ashtray. Alright. That was kind of long. What's the news say? Rain not interested in cooperation. I didn't say that! President Rain shut down a call for cooperation from Franz Richter of the PF... JP ahead of the inauguration ball implying that he shares no value. I didn't imply that at all. Regarding the remarks of Richter about a possible cooperation to fix the current problem, sort of pull it. Stu, the president chose to make no comments. Richter has a long been vocal about his democ dem democratization plans, and it seems that his demands for constitutional change will never become a reality. If we don't see Richter presidency anytime soon, it looks like the opposition will have a hard time during the... No, I didn't say any of that. MP shot. Nation in shock. Sorland has been shocked by grave news today as an elected member of the parliament has been shot dead in a suspected political assassination. Police sirens were heard around the clock today as Horsland police force increased security measures around the capital. The fact that such a violent act happened in the heart of the capital during the new president's inauguration and celebrations has worried many citizens. The Red Youth has reported to have promised revenge. This seems like it has the potential to be a spark that would swirl Sorland into the political violence of the 1920s. That's <laughs> Damn, if that's not fake news. Monica wants a divorce? I don't think she wants a divorce. Peter's gonna coo me and dump me in a ditch? Come on, I don't think so. All right, let's... We got this, like, epic music going on. Re read the report from Holzen. Security increased. Okay. Emergency meeting situation room. The mood in the situation room was gloomy. My cabinet ministers were gathered to discuss the shooting outside the palace. Leals presented the initial report. Bernard Surus was shot dead at 9.09 p.m. in front of the Assembly gates. He was an elected independent member of the Assembly and, as you know, a famous communist. She spoke the last words out with some distaste. The guards... The guards... Uh, wait, I thought Leals was, like, pro-socialist communist in our previous meetings. Uh, the scene were 50 meters away and immediately took action by responding and killing the assailant who was identified as the member of the nationalist organization Young Swords. The president and his family were unharmed, praise God. An MP shot near the palace. That is absolutely unacceptable. What were the motivations of such a horrid act? But why Bernard Cyrus? I mean... I agree. We're reevaluating our security measures. However, the recession has affected minist the ministry negatively. This sets a dangerous atmosphere where the left versus right political violence of the 20s might spark once again. A return to those days would be devastating. The coups are the reason why our country stagnated for a decade. The Red Youth has condemned the killing, but did not stop there. They promised revenge. 
This will this will in turn spark further aggression from the young swords. The whole cycle started because Bernard Surus expressed his views. We can't simply look away. Wait, what? Because he expressed his views, he was killed? Nia, I don't know that I trust you. Who, by the way, you, Nia's always been one of the only members of the Justice Ministry truly deserving the name. She has survived countless attacks of her character while fighting corruption within the ministry and rising to power and only compounded her sense of moral duty. Freedom of expression is part of our constitution. We can't have anyone, let alone an MP, shot for voicing different opinions. Oh, yeah, no, I agree with you then, Nia. I fully agree we should protect freedom of speech. The mel... My, Melanistis, the ideology the Red Youth promotes poses a threat to our country, too. We should be cautious. The Nationalist Young Swords have overstepped, and they should be put under the loop for such extreme action. I fully agree we should protect freedom of speech. Our laws do, and for good reason, silencing voices only results in fear and stagnation inside society. We had, we had that before. We know very well how that turns out. Bring the hammer down on the fascist suit, Perchacho. Well, I already agreed that freedom of speech is important. I hear your concerns. Our police do the best at holding the right of our citizens. We'll prevent such acts from happening again by making sure our security measures are reevaluated. The Minister of Defense grunts in approval. He towers over the rest of us in full military uniform, his many war medals conspicuously on display. Agreed, ma'am. Our gendarme will also help boost security in the rural areas where possible. There might be more to come. We should refrain from making the issue a political one from the start. It will only add fuel to the fire. It is political, though, isn't it? You're right. We need to calm the situation. It's early, but it's early, but we will attend the funeral. Or will we attend the funeral? In my opinion, we should. The nuance here is to detach the person from the violent act. How can that be achieved when it's Bernard Soros we're talking about? He's the communist of Sorland. It's difficult when an elected official has been shot. This is unacceptable for our new administration. We'll make sure to show our stance by condemning it at the funeral. Regardless if a full investigation on all parties is underway, we'll find the subversives and punish them soon enough, Mr. President. I'll do my best to help coordinate the administrative tasks. Justice will be served and the rule of law will return to this country stronger than ever. Only if we stay vigilant as a country, we must think about our upcoming budget. It's too soon to jump to conclusion. Reckless acts will have dire consequences. I agree internal stability must be maintained. Our security funding might need to be increased. We should not lose sight of our real political goals like constitutional reform. It's too soon to jump to conclusions. Reckless acts will have dire consequences. We need to be patient until we have the full picture. It seems that the tensions between the communists and nationalists will escalate further. It'll be difficult to pass any meaningful change if there's chaos in the country. We can't pass any constitutional reforms in such an atmosphere. We can't fix the recession if there isn't stability. We'll make it through this and deliver on our promises. I'm not using excuses. We'll make it through this. Hell yeah! <laughs> okay, Peter. Okay. <laughs> uh... Nice. This will be it for today, then. We'll convene again soon. Thank you all for keeping us updated. <laughs> all right. Murdered at the palace. Breaking news. Bernard Soros, a prominent independent MP known for his communist romanticism, has been murdered, leave, leaving the Maroon Palace grounds after the inauguration ball of Anton Rang. Reports indicate a politically motivated assault by the far-right nationalists of Young Swords. Shocking photographs have been leaked to the press showing blood-dripped stairs of the Maroon Palace. We heavily condemn this sort of political violence. This is the very cycle the president must break with reforms. Okay. Yeah, Fatty Guggins, I don't I don't agree that murdering uh, the opposition is uh is 
uh, a valid expression of political upheaval, especially given the fact that, like, we also have to realize this guy is a, an independent. He's one of the minority parties. So, you know, if we go to, by the way, what's this? Electoral funding reform? So we made a decision there. Reform committee will be next, I guess. There must be something new here. Constitutional amendment require assembly of the Supreme Court. So these are active policies, I guess. There's a lot of freaking active policies, by the way. H3 Highway, promote market economy. But, um... So the cabinet, like, is it dark to say that independence would be nine now? Shouldn't that be updated? Thanks for the follow, Bleach168. Click Diplo. I don't see diploma, uh, political... Where are we again? Diplomacy? So currently our policy is neutrality, although we intend to shift that to be more of a pro-West focus. We're a member of the OMEC, the Organization for American Economic Cooperation, stimulates economic progress and increased continental trade, and an AN member. The, Alli the Alliance of Nations is a global organization that maintains peace, security, and cooperation among nations. This is probably the UN. All right, and that's going to do it for this episode, episode number three of our look at Suzerain, a new political choose-your-own-adventure role-playing type game. We made it through the inaugural ball, although there was a political assassination of a communist leader, which is not good for the stability of our country. It does threaten to plunge the entire thing into civil war. Uh, but we'll see how that plays out in our next episode. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Please, this is a series I really need to see feedback, really need to see if this is something you want to see more of. I'm enjoying the playthrough, uh, but I want to make sure that it's it's something that you guys enjoy watching on YouTube. I know I've mentioned it on a couple of these videos, uh, but uh, just let me know your thoughts. Uh, because I can understand, you know, a text-based game like this isn't always the most exciting thing to watch. Then again, We the Revolution had a, had a pretty... Uh, enjoyable experience for all of us, and that was largely text-based as well. There were, I think, there were more gameplay mechanics in We the Revolution. There was more actual uh, sort of doing things with counters, with graphics, and whatnot. But this is a similar sort of game. So, uh, just again, leave your thoughts down below, and uh, I'll stop asking those questions from here on out. I might be a little bit uh, pestering at this point. But until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time. I'm out.